In this video, we are going to finish up by resuming where we left off in the previous one, covering another tool that would allow the user to achieve a similar end result as a VDM brush. That is not to say that VDM brushes won't be forthcoming in the future. However, the objective here is to inform 3D Coat users what the nearest equivalent is currently, and also to cover what some of the distinct features are in these tools. With that in mind, let's please avoid any debates in the comment section of this video. Let's now proceed by going to the Primitives tool. I can hit the space bar instead of scrolling through the tool panel. And in the object section, I can hit the hotkeys O and 1 in order to select the Primitives tool. And you'll notice that the Primitives are much like what you have in your standard 3D applications, but there are some differences here with certain types of primitives that allow a wide range of parametric adjustments, then freeform lattices. In this case, what we want to do is use a model from our sculpt palette as a freeform deformation object. And as I mentioned in the previous video, it works best when you use voxel mode because in surface mode, Boolean operations are sometimes hit and miss, especially if you are working with extremely dense models, All right? So let's go ahead and click on this ear object. I will hide the ones that already exist in the scene. I wanna make sure I have the body layer selected because I actually want to merge this with the body now, rather than applying it to a layer like I have here. So instead of using a gizmo to move this into place, 3D Coat has an option to quickly place the object using your brush. And when I click the scale to brush radius option, it will adopt the scale of my brush. Additionally, if I check use stroke direction, 3D Coat will utilize the surface normals beneath the brush to indicate the initial direction of the object when it's placed. All I have to do is right mouse click and drag to the left or to the right in order to scale the brush and simply click where I want to place it on the model. Now you'll notice that the object is scaled to my brush radius, but the object is not uniform. It's elongated, so 3D Coat is using the shortest axis to gauge the scale. If I want to reduce the overall scale, then I can reduce the size of my brush. And there are a couple different ways if I want to use a gizmo to make some basic transforms. I can do that by checking transform lattice and modifying it this way. Or I can uncheck that and in the E panel by hitting the E key, I can select the freeform lasso and make adjustments to the entire thing by selecting the entire group of control points. And then I can also just select different points to make further adjustments. Let's choose these and I want to uncheck click to place so that I don't accidentally change the placement of the object. And we could change the cage structure. I currently have it set to three along the X axis and three along the Z axis, but I will leave them as is for now. I can hit the smooth primitive option here to smooth it once before I apply it. And if I'm happy with that, I can turn symmetry on. And then hit the enter key or the apply button. If I want to use this as a subtractive Boolean, I can do that here by choosing subtract, intersect, or split. Okay, so let's hit the apply button. We'll choose another tool to step out of the Primitives tool. You can see how well that has merged with the underlying voxel object. And with that, we will conclude this look at alternative tools in 3D Coat to vector displacement brushes. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.